Hi everybody, it's Bruce from Nature Calls and today we are going to continue on with a hammock build that I'm doing for my daughter and uh, today's live video is going to be on the UCR that I'm going to have for her ridge line on her hammock. Uh, UCR stands for Universal Constrictor Rope. Um, it's just one way to use am steel to make a fixed ridge line between the ends of your hammock uh, to make sure that you have the sag stay exactly the way you want it to go. So to do this I have a whole bunch of am steel 764 in the orange and then the the restrictor part I'm going to do in some green and this is actually uh, some green that I had from something else that failed so don't always throw things away you can always use little bits and pieces of uh, cordage I guess we never threw it away we'd, we'd never get it um, so th that's the two hard pieces that we're going to be using to make the UCR and in my ever favorite uh, these scissors that I got from Costco uh, they're uh, really nice they're titanium and they can cut through things real, real easy. Um, I find it easier than using a knife when trying to cut up am steel. I've um, got my little fish wire to fish because we do a berry in a UCR. And some measuring stuff. So we'll be measuring things out. Now what's nice about a, a UCR is that um, like for a while I was using like a big whoopee sling to make an adjustable ridge line and when you get enough am steel to make a whoopee sling that's essentially you know nine ten feet long kind of double that you know if you're getting a lot of am steel it's kind of a waste uh, it's definitely extra weight and using a UCR you're gonna cut down on a lot of that weight and UCRs are fun they're just fun as uh, like whoopee, whoopee slings are fun Hello, uh, Texas Lil Star 63. Well, cool. Thanks for joining. I think you might be into hammocking. So, a little bit on working with am steel, and when you're measuring it, there's certain things that you can and can't do with am steel. It seems like you can do a ton with it, but normally on am steel, you're always thinning the end of the am steel so you can you can bring it down. Um, into berries. Hey Joseph, how you been? Never done willing to learn, right on. So the am steel, usually uh, you're always thinning the end and so consider that an inch on each end. When you just make a loop um, and you bury, I'll show you this as I go along, and you bury a portion of that. Um, oh, you made some, good job Joseph. So. Um, so when you bury it, you lose a certain amount of inches. So say you lose anywhere from three to four inches of potential use. Um, and then the loop, if you're putting a loop in. Um, so, so you kind of have to take all those into account. And then the actual length that you bury, if you're looking for uh, something to constrict down and hold a lot of weight, you have to bury a certain amount of the amp steel inside itself. And I haven't personally tested how much, but I've heard that eight inches is like a minimum. Um, and if you're really good at it, you, it's literally as long as you want it to be. So I would, uh, I always go with like 10 inches on my berry if I'm gonna be using it to actually constrict something. So the first thing we need to do is to make um, the, the, the constrictor part of the UCR. And that's a smaller piece, and it has two little loops on it on each end. So we're gonna make that first. So in the middle where the constriction is going to be, that's going to be 10 inches. Then on either side of that, and you'll see all this, there's gonna be buried ends about, let's say four inches on each side, so now we're 18. Then you have the loops themselves. Let's make them about four inches each, so now we're at 26 inches. Um, we lose a little bit on this, uh, thinning out so inch so 28 inches so what I'm going to do is make it 30 inches long 
no no real rocket science to all this um, and you can screw up and and do all kinds of things let's just get that to 30 so right about there you don't have to be exact and am steel's cool because you can bend it and it kind of holds a little bend we're going to go ahead and cut that at 30 inches okay so now we have a piece of am steel 30 inches long first thing we do is uh, thin out the end so we can um, so it'll go through the berry easier let's see it's got about four so I do I can just pull this stuff apart with my fingers I know some people use knitting needles um, I've done knitting needles and all that and uh, I've done so many that I, I can just go at it but if using knitting needles and things like that helps you great so there's one side let's do the other side pull her apart there cut it off And um, very good. Is anybody going out this week? Okay, so first thing we want to do is make loops, loop on each end. So this is kind of basic um, Am Steel 101. Um, so let's make a loop like that. It doesn't have to be doesn't have to be huge. It can be pretty small. Um, so let's say that's actually make it a little bit smaller so I'm trying to get about two inches on each side so a four inch loop and we just bring the pen over hold on hold on sorry about that I I, uh, I don't use pens a lot anymore um, but if it helps you remember where things are so I'm just gonna kind of mark things because that'll help me later so I'm just marking across the two and this is where they're going to cross and the first thing that we want to do is make what's called a locked Brummel and that's just basically a, a, a locked loop so right here we have a little mark I'm gonna drop oh sorry Lars all right, go 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 to the store. I'll be. I, I might be back. So I, I like that you're here. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is bring this tag end, this free end, through this part of it. So I get my fish tool, and with the am steel, you just scrunch it up a little bit, and it expands because am steel is hollow on the inside. It's braided around the outside, and it has eight little lines going around the outside and uh, so when you squish it down it's hollow inside here and that's how that's why you can bury it and um, so so far in this build what I'm going to do is just take my fish tool and have it go through hopefully it is in the middle hey Rob how you doing so hopefully that's going through the middle of the am steel. And what we're going to do now is open up the end of my fish tool. Come on. Started to kind of do up in the air. And this fish tool, what this is, is it's wire that I got at a um, a florist so it's really stiff very thin wire so there opened it up the end I'm gonna put the thinned end in bring it up to the end there and that's where you fold over this thin part so now we're just going to pull it through the long side so there it pulled it through 
And then this other dot, did you buy it or did they feel like, feel like being? Oh, uh, no, I actually bought a, um, he asked if I, if, if they just gave me the wire and they might, they sure might. Um, but I think I was at some craft store and I bought a package to the wire. Yeah, I got, and so I bought a package of wire um, at, I don't know, like a Michael's or somewhere. Um, and it came with like 30, 30 of these wires. And I've been using it now, that bag, for a couple of years. And I'm still, still got uh, probably a good 10 left. So it lasts forever, but the stuff is really thin and you drop it and uh, you almost, I, I can't see it. My eyes aren't good enough. Okay, so I'm gonna pull that line through until the other hole shows up. And that's where we're going to take this side and put it through that hole. So I'm gonna scrunch that up, take my fish and put it on through the middle again. Separate it out a little bit. Now I'm gonna take the long side, put it in there. Fold it over and then just pull it on through. Okay, so there, got it all through, put my fish tape down. So now you end up with something that looks like that. So now I'm just gonna pull that and pull that down until it locks together. And now now that's that's perfectly locked down. It's a lock brummel that's super solid, not going anywhere. Um, now to make it look clean, we are going to bury this piece right here. So what you do is you just lay that down on top of the other one. You go past it maybe an inch, like right about there. And you squish that down. And you take your fish wire. Now this time, instead of going through it, you're gonna go down through the middle. And so, it's gonna pick a hole and, it, and you, it helps if you kind of scrunch it up a little bit. And so now this wire is going down to the middle. I, so if you're screwed up and, you, and it comes through like that, that's no big deal, just back it out and then kind of keep going. So it helps just kind of squish it down. It's riding up to the middle there. Now everybody, you know, you always ask, where do I get my stuff? So let's kind of start covering that. Um, the Amsteel, um, this Amps, or I don't know about this particular one, but Amsteel in general, 764 Amsteel, um, I get from either ripstopbytheroll.com, um, Dutchware has it, um, then Dutch's other site, makeyourgear.com has it. Okay, so now what I've done is I've run that wire down and I'm bringing it up as close to the locked Brummel knot as I can. Now I'm going to bring it up through a little bit and the little trick when you start doing this is hook hook the end of your wire so you don't pull it all the way through. So I'm going to bring that on up and split the, split the wire again. and put the thin part through. Okay. Back it through a little bit. So there's the thin part through, kind of fold it over. So now what we're going to do is start pulling this part inside and that's called the berry and to do that you just pull it up and I'm pulling with this hand and I'm kind of spinning with that one and you kind of keep scrunching it up it's kind of like that finger puzzle right the Chinese finger puzzle and it just takes a little bit of coaxing and I'll like turn my hands around 
get different angles on it. And it eventually will start going through. But yeah, I get uh, so am steel, and I also get am steel from a little marine shop called uh, GoToMarine.com, and they actually they're actually the cheapest of of all the places, and you can get thicker am steel, and that's something that I'm going to be playing with here. Uh, they're sending me some one eighth inch am steel here on the 31st, and um, I'm going to play around with the one eighth inch. The 764 is kind of the general um, hammock um, diameter. So you can kind of see it's starting to go down inside. Is that where you got yours, a go-to? Okay, good, thanks Joe. Um, so I'm gonna keep massaging it down. And eventually it's gonna come out down here, hopefully. <laughs> This is a, a piece of am steel. I, uh, my sons are Marines, and they took pretty much every one of my hammocks <laughs> um, for a deployment, and uh, they didn't understand the whole whoopee sling thing, and so they just tie all kinds of knots and kind of screwed up a bunch of things. Okay, so now it's come all the way through, and we're just gonna pull those little pieces out like that, and... Rid of my fish wire so now you want to pull real tight try and flatten it all out and this is the cool part is you milk the scrunched up piece back up and it eventually will go and cover the whole thing up didn't quite get it there there we go so there it's all buried in there so now we have one loop and uh, I'll do the other side while well, we're kind of chatting away. So I'm gonna just do kind of a similar thing. Looks good, grab my pen. Yeah, so um, I don't know if you've all played with like UCRs, but they are pretty cool. I really, um, I haven't really explored everything I can do with the UCR because I still like the whoopee slings um, a lot. But the UCR is a uh, con definite contender uh, when it comes to this type of stuff. So I'm gonna put that through the middle. Um, yeah, I get a lot of my stuff from Ripstop by the Roll. They, they seem to have a lot of really wide variety of especially like fabrics and webbing and come on come on here we go and uh, like this hammock that I'm making right now that this is for is for my daughter um, and I'm using the one ounce hyper D which is a really uh, soft fabric and yeah, it's hot pink <laughs> so I'm just doing exactly what I did on the other side this is great fun uh, if you if you want to get an am steel it's really not that expensive and it's great stuff to have around why is it getting hooked up on things it's great stuff to have around and um, and it's fun to play with, um, like if you're sitting, just sitting around watching TV at night or whatever, it's, uh, you can make all kinds of cool things. So now I'm going to the other side. Still working on kind of the lock Brummel. Uh, just take me just a second and then we'll get onto the, the actual UCR part of the program. But you gotta do this first, so uh, that's the other thing with working with Amsteel and doing these kind of knots is there's certain things that you have to do first. Um, in making loops on the ends of your um, Amsteel is kind of one of the first things you have to do is make loops if it's going to have a loop in it. So 
kind of get all your loop stuff out of the way. It's interesting because this is a this is kind of used am steel, so it's a little bit harder after it's it's a lot easier to work with when it's new. So now we have a, a big loop um, on the end. We've got to bring through. So I'm going to actually take it all the way down past it to where I can get at least some part of it through. And then the rest should come through fairly easy. Okay, so now I've got it part way through. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of my fish wire. Now it's kind of so now it's thicker, the thicker part. And we'll just kind of keep massaging that through. Am I bringing the right thing through? Yeah. It's kind of got a manhandle it a little bit okay so now we've got back to that little lock brummel very good nice and tight so now we got the two loops i'm going to bury this so lay it down flat go past it about inch maybe an inch and a quarter get my fish wire where I go back down through the middle anybody out there makes make gear So now I'm just going down through the middle again. Any other do it DIY gear makers out there? It's a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, cool. Accomplishing the dream, but, but first a poncho. That's great. I've got actually. I uh, I hope you videotape that accomplishing the dream. Who's making a poncho? Um, oh, making a bushcraft spoon. Sweet. But I have. Um, I'm working on a a poncho myself. Um, and uh, so I'd love to see how you're doing it. Um, not that it's really complicated, but the hood. The hood part is. Um, and so I'd be real interested if you're gonna videotape it. Where is the, where's my thing? Yeah, if you're going to videotape it, that'd be really cool. Um, I got some like event fabric from Ripstop by the Roll. So it's, I'm gonna be making it out of event, um, which I think should be pretty cool. Um, are you going to put the, like, make it a survival poncho type of thing? Where you um, have the tarp tie outs and all that? See, that's another thing I'm contemplating is like, do you put tarp poncho? Poncho would be cool, yeah. Do you put all those tie outs on it or as a survival piece? Or do you just go ahead and uh, kind of rely on, you know, the old pebble in, in, in the cloth trick and not have to not deal with all that? Um, extra weight on your poncho and extra um, failure points and things like that. I don't, you know, I, I that's kind of where I am right now on my poncho. Um, God, this am steel is being very difficult for some reason, but it's the use. It's the used am steel. Okay. There, I finally got it through. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, that's what, I think that's what's fun about making your own gear is you can think about it and um, make decisions and kind of make your own rationalizations as to reasons why you're doing something. Okay, now I'm just going to bury that down. So, I never thought doubles the ground tarp. This would be longer. Yeah, so that's another question. So you're talking about the length. And so... You know, on the length, 
do you know so do you make it longer in the back so when you have a backpack on um, that it it covers you properly or does that really matter I mean or can you just um, make it the same length yeah that's the plan yeah it, or do you just make it the same length so when you're wearing it without a pack that it's just, that it is the uh, that it just comes say back to the back of your knees or something like that when you have a backpack on then it just raises up a little bit higher in the back I mean it, it, it's so those are the things that I, I am always thinking about um, so just so you know, accomplishing the dream, I'm I'm thinking of not making it longer in the back. That um, that in reality, if it's raining, um, if it if it raises up a little bit and goes over my pack, is that really going to matter? Because um, your legs just get wet, you know, when it's raining. It's it's uh, like your shoes and your socks; it, it, they just get wet, in my opinion. Yeah, working with old Amsteel is really, really quite a chore. I have snaps. Yeah, uh, that's a great that's a great way to go. Um, yeah, she's gonna put some snaps in, and so she can make it smaller. Um, that's a great way to go too. Are you gonna use the cam snaps? Those are cool. Okay, so I got it finally through. Now I'm just gonna milk that on down. There we go. Okay, so now this is going to be the constrictor part of the universal constrictor rope. So when I first started talking, I was talking about I bought the snaps for ripstop. Okay, yeah, it must be the cam snaps. Those are cool. I, I was going to get a cam snap machine and, and all that kind of stuff. Those are neat. Those are little plastic uh, snaps. Um, so they're lightweight, and so they'll be great. Um, I think that's a great idea. Okay, so I was talking about earlier about you know what. Yes. Um, oh, are you doing the AT in 2018? How cool. Um, accomplishing the dream, right on. So you have the loop, then your block Brummel, and then the berry. Now, you have to remember now that you can't double berry. So that's, that's kind of dead. Then, so now you, if you can see, it gets thinner right at the tip of my thumb. So from that, to the same spot on the other side, which is right there, is the only thing you can use as the constrictor part. And that, if we did our calculations right, is about 10 inches. <laughs> so, um, I think we did it okay. So now we have to decide, in a ridge line, how long we want the, the, the main ridge line portion of it. And so, uh, an 11 foot hammock, um, if you look, if the general hammock number is what, 83%. And that's just a general, it's just a general. Um, it could be 80%, it could be 90%, it could be, you know, it could be anything. But you have to kind of make a decision. Um, and this is, so this here is gonna be a portion of your ridge line length. And then you have to decide what, let's see, actually, let's see where we are um, with this. So actually from that point to there, okay, that's a foot. Okay, so we're going to accomplish a foot of our fixed ridge line length with this portion. Now, if you have a, a 11 foot hammock and 83% of that, something like 113 inches, um, but say you want it, um, to be to lay a little flatter so you're going to need to make it a little bit longer so um, let's add I'm just going to guess that we want say 120 inches total length so we got a foot here so 120 is 10 times 12 so basically we want nine feet of the ridge line and that's where it's really kind of cool with the universal constrictor rope is that it can go as short is short is short where a whoopee sling actually has a limit as to how short it can go but but with this you can make it as short as your ridge line as short as this piece right here so let's choose um, nine feet as our 
other piece, the, the part that will be our, our main ridge line. I measure that out. So I was talking earlier, so uh, go to Marine. They are sending me some 1 8 inch um, am steel. So that's the next size up from the 764th, which is what I'm using right now. Uh, because so it's got a slightly bigger diameter, right? Okay, so now I'm at nine feet, so now I'm gonna add about three inches for the berry. Thanks, Tornado, I love it. About three inches for the berry, and one, two, three, four, five, six, and then another um, eight inches for another loop. So right there. But yeah, so they're sending me some um, 1 8 inch, and so it's just slightly, slightly bigger diameter than this, just slightly, but you gain twice the holding strength, or just twice the brake strength. It's, it's, it's a huge increase, and I know when I first got into, so right now I'm just going to thin out the ends. I know when I first got into um, using am steel and making whippy slings, I didn't even question you know, it was just 764. That's what what you use. Um, then I started thinking about it <laughs> and going, well, hey, you know, maybe it's maybe it's might be better to do a one eighth because you really gain a lot of strength. And when it comes to things like you know um, sag and um, and degrees of angle for your hammock. And all those kind of things. A lot of that, if if you have a ridge line, it's really it's not dependent on the sag of the hammock anymore, um, because you have a fixed ridge line. So your sag is going to be your sag. But the reason to do a thirty degree um, hang or a twenty degree hang is really the strength of the am steel or the or, or your suspension. And at thirty degrees with seven sixty force, you're safe. Actually, you're safe up to um, 20 degrees. Once you go past 20 degrees, you're starting to get marginal as far as the brake strength of your am steel. Your your tree straps usually a thousand pound. So I'm just going to make a loop like I've been doing. Um, yeah. So the 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 tree straps gonna die. <laughs> so the tree straps. Yeah, actually, I wonder if mine is. Um, so. And sometimes when I get into camp, it's it's late and it's dark and it's raining. And if I can just throw my gear up pretty darn fast and be confident in it, um, I'd be up for that. Okay, I'm just gonna do, I'm just making my loop again. Um, so in about a week or so, I'll do, um, I'll, I'll make those I'll make them I'll make them live and then we can actually weigh them and see what the weight difference is because that's really kind of the big argument at that point right is 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 the weight a benefit or not and I'm I'm guessing it's only going to be an ounce um, so I'm just working my way through it's a lot easier with new am steel that's for sure um, so yeah so I'll make I'll make a whoopie slings out of the one eighth inch, and we can we can weigh them against um, some seven sixty four am steel, and um, see if it's a big big deal or not. But I'm making seven sixty or one eighth inch because I got one of those new REI bridge hammocks, and although their suspension's cool and everything, it's just not big enough for my. Um, big trees up here in the northwest. Okay, so now we're just back to doing the locked Brummel. We've done this now three times, but you have to do this. You have to do your, your loops and everything. Um, so there's locked Brummel, the loops and everything before you do anything else. You lay it down flat, come up about an inch and a half. You'll see 12, exactly, you get 12, yeah, you get 12 strands. Yeah, so um, various, yeah, isn't it? Isn't it? It's it. Uh, 
it should be fun. Now, those are some cool statistics on the on the uh, the one eighth. I th I think it might be a way a way to go. Um, sure, if you're if you're really counting your your grams, if you're like an ultra lighter, then yeah, you'd probably not want to sacrifice that. Um, I'm not a gram counter. I mean, yeah, I I, I agree. The lighter, the better, but. Um, I think a lot of a lot of that is also dependent on your bank account. Oh, cool! Thanks, Joshua. Um, you know, if you had, I was somebody on is doing a through hike, and they and they post their their load out, and so I went and added up what these guys are paying for their gear. And there's nothing wrong with paying a lot for your gear. I'm not. I'm. I'm not saying it's wrong, but just for one loadout, one backpack that weighs say nine or ten pounds, that costs around two thousand dollars to do that. Um, and not everybody can do that or want to do that. So, so we have to make do with kind of what what gear we can get, what weight we can get. Um, I'm sure we'd all love 900 fill power down in our sleeping bags or our quilts but that's super expensive and so if you can get um say 600 fill power or 650 and it it keeps you warm but yeah it's going to be a little heavier but um i've done it for years are you okay chris how you doing yeah it's like it's like uh, the other day i did i, I went and washed I had some big agnes zero degree sleeping bags very expensive um, and to replace them today, you know, two of them would be about, I don't know, a good thousand dollars just for sleeping bags. And, uh, and I don't use them all the time. I use them a couple times in the winter. Um, they're 600 fill power. Do I really want to invest in that? I don't know. Like I just, I just ordered, um, some climate, climate sleeping bags. Uh, they had a deal on Amazon the other day. Um, 40 bucks for zero degree or 20 degree climate bags and uh, there again they aren't I think they're 650 fill I'm still working on getting my thing done uh, but they look nice yeah I'm not going 35 pounds yeah it's uh, personally I can carry 35 pounds I'm I'm okay with that. I'm 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 uh, uh Chris, yeah, nine pounds overnight base weight. Well Chris has you have a lot of skill, Chris. Um and that's one other thing. If you're gonna go super lightweight, I think having skills um in the ability to um hey Roger, hey from Tennessee. It's it's in summer. But yeah, like um there's Roger, our buddy who's coming back to life for us but um, he's uh, but you know if you have the skills to um, be out with lightweight gear too I think that's really important um, say you are getting really cold or say it is torrential rain Joe's back just finishing my uh, last berry here Yeah, it's. Uh, I think. I think the more you can work on your skills, um, then you can go. The lighter you can go. It's like I just did a whole thing on first aid, and there are people that don't take first aid kits. Uh, climate, K L Y M I T. Yeah, it's the climate K S B twenty down, and they had they had. Like the red one was like 150 bucks, but they had uh, their black ones for um, 49 or 39, 49 bucks, somewhere right in there. And um, what's kind of funny is like, like on uh, one of the social things, someone kind of brought it to everybody's attention. It's like, hey, what does everybody think about this? And um, everybody was talking about it. I'm like, well, I'm thinking I'm just going to order it. <laughs> I'm not going to wait around anymore. Okay, so there we go. All right, so there's the loop and the berry on the long piece. So we got that done. Okay, now we're almost done. So that's the long piece of the UCR. 
So now what we need to do is we need to bury the orange into the green. So I'm going to take my fish tool. I do break it. Broke it. Okay, give me a sec. All right, so here is, oh, did you look it up? So here is the bag of floral wire that I got, and I've got like eight pieces left in there, nine pieces. Um, I just pull one out, bend it in half. Yeah, but keep an eye out um, on Amazon, and that, cl that climate stuff seems to be a really, um, it comes out really inexpensive. And what's really cool about that that particular bag that I liked, so now I'm going to start pushing the wire down to the middle. So I'm gonna come past where it's buried, just like a half an inch. So there's where the bury of this part ends. It's gonna go right past that. And Climate, you know, it's, it's one of those brands in, I think it's American made too. And uh, their sleeping pads are getting really great reviews and their sleeping bags, but the sleeping bag, the KSB Climate sleeping bag actually has, um, oh really, actually, just give me a second here, I gotta put in a secondary battery. That's one thing if you guys are going to do this uh, live thing, uh, it runs your battery down. Okay, go. I'm using my BioLite. Here we go. Um, but the, the sleeping bag, the baffles are elasticized. And so when you're in there, um, it elasticizes around your body. So the idea is you have even less air to heat up. Oh, thanks, Chris. Um, well, this is fun. That why I'm doing all this, and if you haven't seen my other videos, I'm, I'm just building a hammock for my daughter. Um, and she... Here, Look at that. <laughs> um, and I've done a lot of videos on how to make hammocks, so I thought this would be fun to do this live thing. But the, the climate sleeping bag, so it has these elasticized baffles, and uh, so it's going to keep you um, even more, you know, the, the theory of keeping you warm is, uh, I think, really good. We'll see. But I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to work just great. Okay, so got my berry. It's going to be a good 10 inches. Come on. Come on through. Okay, so there I've got the wire. Little hooks on the end so I can't pull it through. And it's coming out this end. So now I'm going to find the orange. and hook it through now this is probably maybe the hardest part about doing this but once you get it going so now i'm going to pull that all the way through kind of scrunch it up massage it massage once you get it going it uh, usually starts to go pretty fast. But yeah, I try and get, I try and never pay retail. Um, oh, with my REI dividend. <laughs> I had a little bit left over, so I got one of these MSR um, Power Trail Shots which I think is gonna be really cool. Um, I like the Sawyer Squeeze, but um, 
I kind of got sick and tired of it. Um, so I hated filling up those little bottles and doing the whole squeeze thing and all that. And, and uh, so this is kind of everything that I wanted in the Sawyer Squeeze. Plus, I don't have to, plus it, uh, it's, you can put it like in a puddle that's, figure out what to buy with my day. I know. So, <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you. Oh, another thing that I got. Um, this is Snow Peak Titanium Coffee Press. So it's a coffee press. It holds three cups. Um, you can put it right on your burner and um, boil water in it. It's without, with everything in it, it's seven ounces. Um, I don't know, John. Did you not get a notice? <laughs> so I think that's that's uh, that's a cool thing to get with your dividend. Okay, so now the uh, now the orange is coming out. So in all practical purposes, now pull it through a little bit. So now I might have to redo it. That didn't come out quite. I'll, I'll, I might redo this one. Um, because I wish that was a little bit longer. That's, I should have taken into account that um, when you constrict it, it shrinks up. But so now, so you have this piece here and that will hook on one end of the hammock and this piece here will hook onto the other side of the hammock and you adjust it right here or right here so the two loops then you kind of massage it down tight and then you've got yeah that's not going to be long enough so I will redo that not on this video so you guys want to stick through it um, yeah so that's like six inches that's not holding using all those maps you know i haven't even got a chance to look through all those maps john john had a whole ton of maps sup sup <laughs> so that's as far as i gotta go i'm not gonna do the end the little handle on this um because that's just not gonna work that's six inches there i want at least 10 inches of berry but um I'll keep working on the hammock and I'll show you guys that all later. But um, that is the, I'll right, see that again, the whole principle behind it. Okay, so there is the little constrictor rope, has the two handles on it. Then like a whoopee, you just unrestrict it and you can pull it either way. And then if I did this very longer, you just massage it down and then it's, then it's tight. So, but that's not long enough. So it's cool and it uses a lot less am steel on your ridge line. And um, I'll keep doing this build out for my daughter's hammock. And uh, hopefully we will get to see um, the whole thing together. Yeah, we'll, we'll see, whoop, anybody? Shh. Yes, John Lord, yeah, I hope everybody's seeing that. <laughs> yeah, well, you had a lot more snow, Chris, over there in Maine. Uh, we have a lot of snow over here, but we have dry areas too. So, so um, okay, well, that is today's uh, show, and I really appreciate everybody coming and talking with me. Um, it's a lot less lonely. So uh, the next thing, um, I do need to make soft shackles. I'm not very good at them. So they take me a long time, so I won't be doing a video on those. Um, I, I do... Um, Okay, thank you, John. Prepper University, sweet. Um, the um, Texas Bushcrafter does a really good video on soft shackles. Way better than I could do it. And uh, the tree huggers won't be a big deal. And then that, then the hammock will be good to go. And then maybe in a month I'll do the, the underquilt part of it. So, all right, thanks a lot, everybody. I'll talk to you later. Bye now.